Hello, my name is Lauren Calvert. I'm a graduate of St. Andrews College, graduated in 1976, and then again in 2009. This is the St. Andrews Advent Meditation for Friday, December the 4th, 2020. Our scripture today is from uh, the prophet Jeremiah, reading in the 33rd chapter, verses 14 to 16. I'm reading from the Poverty and Justice Bible, uh, published by the Canadian Bible Society. The passage reads, The Lord said, I made a wonderful promise to Israel and Judah, and the days are coming when I will keep it. I promise that the time will come when I will appoint a king from the family of David, a king that will be honest and rule with the justice. In those days, Judah will be safe. Jerusalem will have peace and will be named the Lord gives justice. This is where the reading ends. On November um, the 11th this fall, um, the people of the United States were still counting the ballots in their presidential election. On that day, more than 72 million American voters had cast their ballots for President Donald Trump. Many of those who voted for President Trump are Christian, and many of those Christians see and saw in Donald Trump the very king promised by Jeremiah. Now on that same day, 77 million Americans had cast their ballots for Joe Biden. Many of those who voted for Joe Biden are Christian. And many of these Christians see in Jeremiah's vision a hope and a promise for a leader yet to come. A leader to supplant the reign of Donald Trump. The ancients, too, as they heard Jeremiah, will have had their own visions of a leader and a messiah, visions of one who would come to rule with justice and in whose reign would be security and peace. But rather than the messiah the ancients expected and rather aside from the messiah that we so often want to expect, along came a child in a stable. Along came one who described greatness as service. Along came one who described suffering as victory, who proclaimed a justice born not out of power and might, but of humility and love. Along came a child who confounded all of their expectations and still that manger confronts our expectations, our hopes, and our common definitions of power and leadership. Still Christ comes unanticipated and in the unexpected, not in power, but in humility. 1958, Lawrence Ferenghetti wrote his poem called Christ Climbed Down. These are just a few of the lines. Christ climbed down from his bare tree this year and ran away to where there were no rootless Christmas trees hung with candy canes and breakable stars. Christ Climbed down from his bare tree this year and ran away to where no intrepid Bible salesman in two-tone Cadillacs covered the territory. And where no televised wise men praised the Lord Calvert whiskey. Christ climbed down from his bare tree this year and stole softly away into some anonymous Mary's womb again where in the darkest night of everybody's anonymous soul, he awaits again an unimaginable and impossibly immaculate reconception, the very craziest 
of second comings. Listen, the prophet says, the time will come. And so let us pray with the prayer of Janet Morley from number 13 in Voices United. Let us pray together. O God, our deliverer, you cast down the mighty and lift up those of no account. Like Elizabeth and Mary, who embraced one another with songs of liberation, may we, pregnant with your spirit, affirm one another in hope for the world. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>